Today, the Republican Party decided to show the American people just how useless they really are. Instead of addressing our nation's problems, the Republican Party and the House of Representatives decided to hold a vote to hold our Attorney General, Merrick Garland, in contempt of Congress. And for what crime, you might ask? Merrick Garland had the audacity to not turn over the audio recordings of special counsel Robert Hur's interview with President Joe Biden about the classified documents found at his office and home. Keep in mind, the full transcript of this recording has been released, but Republicans are trying to sell to their base that Democrats somehow working with Merrick Garland and Robert Hur have hidden some contents of the interviews, and so they are demanding that the recordings be made public. They have no real purpose for getting those audio tapes except to try to edit them in a nefarious way and make Joe Biden look bad. But what Republicans weren't counting on was Democrats to bring the heat with some devastating talking points. Democrats took advantage of the moment with a lot of press paying attention because it's rare that an attorney general is held in contempt of Congress. So Democrats turned the tables on Republicans and pounded on them in front of everybody. Check this out. First up was the legendary Jamie Raskin, highest ranking Democrat on the powerful oversight committee. Jamie wanted to let the American people know exactly why Republicans are holding Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress instead of conducting real business. Holding the Attorney General of the United States in contempt is one more useful distraction from the complete and devastating implosion of the Biden impeachment probe, which of course was the number one priority of these talented leaders. Remember, they promised to reveal the greatest presidential high crime and misdemeanor in American history, an act of treachery and deceit that dwarfs even the impeachment, even the incitement of a violent mob insurrection and an attempted political coup that took place right here against our Constitution, our Congress, our Vice President in this chamber. But after their truly prodigious investigation, punctuated, admittedly, by some unfortunate mishaps like Chinese spies, fake evidence, pornographic displays in committee, and their own witnesses testifying that there were no grounds for presidential impeachment, they have nothing to show for their arduous work other than one more debunked Russian disinformation operation and one more indicted GOP informant and star witness. Jamie Raskin just laying it all out there, embarrassing the Republicans. Their impeachment inquiry has been a disaster from the get-go, and they never will produce any evidence against Joe Biden because he hasn't done anything wrong. But what they're hoping for is just to keep the investigation going all the way through the election, hinting at we've got a new witness with some bombshell evidence, or we got a new email that blows the whole thing open, and then they don't deliver the goods. But Jamie Raskin wasn't done with the Republicans yet. He wanted to let them know that they are absolute hypocrites for holding our attorney general in contempt of Congress for ignoring a subpoena when there are Republican members in that chamber right now who have ignored subpoenas from their own body, the House of Representatives. Watch this. And it's rich beyond measure, like a billionaire rich, to be asked to hold the attorney general contempt by people who themselves receive subpoenas to testify before the January 6th committee who never rendered a single document nor a single minute of testimony to the January 6th committee. I urge Congress to reject this absurd motion, and I'm happy to yield back to the chairman. Now Chair watch would this. Remind members to refrain from engaging in personalities toward presumptive nominees for the office of president. Recognize the gentleman from Ohio. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First of all, I never said I wouldn't testify in front of the January 6th committee. I just want to know what the parameters that that testimony were going to be. So I never did say no to that. Second. So look at that. Jamie Raskin getting a rare response out of Jim Jordan. They are really getting under the Republican skin. I love it. Next up was Congressman Eric Swalwell, who never holds back. He wanted to let people know exactly who Democrats are fighting for. Watch this. This is not about the contempt of the Attorney General. It's about MAGA Republicans' contempt for the Constitution, the rule of law, and democracy. And it's about who any of us came here to fight for. MAGA Republicans are fighting for one person at the cost of what your constituents actually care about. You're fighting for a felon. You're fighting for a felon. It's true. On this side, we're fighting for working people. 
We're fighting for the kids and the teachers and the soldiers and the cops and the firefighters and the bakers and the butchers, people who go to work every day and count on us to do something for them. And you, you're working for a felon, a felon. Twelve of his neighbors, people in the community where he committed crimes, made 34 decisions and 408 straight times they said guilty. So let me make it clear where we stand. We will choose families over felons, verdicts over vengeance, and people over politics. I love that Eric Swalwell pointed out it was a jury of Donald Trump's peers that found him guilty. These were 12 random people basically picked off the street that weighed all of the evidence and came to the conclusion that Donald Trump is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And you cannot take that away ever. Eric Swalwell also wanted to get in a shot on Jim Jordan about ignoring his subpoena and being a total hypocrite. Check it out. An additional minute. And can we also just talk about subpoenas for one second? Because two of your last speakers are 750 plus days in defiance of a subpoena. So yes. get real when Mr. Jordan and Mr. Biggs come to this floor and want to talk and get all righteous about subpoenas. You start honoring your subpoenas and we can talk about anyone else's subpoena. And I yield back. And these aren't just any subpoenas. These were subpoenas from the House of Representatives for Jim Jordan. And now he, as a member of that body, wants someone else to be held in contempt of Congress for ignoring a subpoena from the House when he did the exact same thing? I don't think so. And finally, the heavy hitter coming in to back cleanup, Adam Schiff, the next senator from California, wanted to let the American people know who we should be holding in contempt here. And it's not Merrick Garland. Contempt, to hold something as beneath the dignity of consideration, something to be scorned, an attitude towards something that is inferior, worthless, open disrespect for something that is vile, despised, disgraced, insolence in the presence of the law. An apt description, not of the subject of this motion, but of those who bring it. Not of an attorney general who has upheld our justice system, who has demonstrated a respect for our institutions, but of those who mock the idea that we are a nation of laws, not the individual. When Republicans line up in front of a Manhattan courthouse to denigrate the rule of law in the service of a now convicted felon, that is contemptuous. When Republicans peddle the lie that Joe Biden is pulling the levers of Trump's Manhattan prosecution, that is contemptuous. Yes. When Republican committee chairmen ignore their own subpoena, but feign indignation when the attorney general complies with his, that is contemptuous. That is deserving of our scorn. That is beneath the dignity of this body. That is vile, disgraceful, and worthy. I have additional 30 seconds? That is deserving of our scorn. That is beneath the dignity of this body. That is vile, disgraceful, and worthy of derision. Those who bring this motion bring contempt all right, but only upon themselves. I yield back. Yes, sir. These Republicans are the ones who should be held in contempt. The defense of Donald Trump, the things they've gone to to undermine the rule of law in America, like defending him at his in front of the courthouse at his criminal trial are just outrageous. And I think the history books will not write kindly upon these Republicans. Kudos to the Democrats for coming out. Man, I am so happy with the Democrats in the 118th Congress. They've stepped up to the plate and pushed back so hard on these Republicans for the last year and a half. And I appreciate it. They are warriors in the arena of the House of Representatives. And they've helped make these Republicans look foolish time and time again. In the past, Democrats would kind of step back and say, you know what, we want to be the adults in the room. We don't want to get down in the mud. We don't want to fight with the Republicans. But now Democrats are spending a lot of time pushing back on these clowns. And I think that is the appropriate thing to do. We live in a day and age where people are not watching the news. They're not paying attention to who is doing the right thing. They are seeing clips on social media and deciding what to do based on that. So we need fighters out there. And I'm thrilled with what the Democrats did, not only today, which was amazing, but just in general. So thank you, Democrats. We appreciate you.